Hello everyone, welcome back once again to the Tenzin Show with me, Tenzin Chijin, where we definitely talk of all things success and positivity. I really want to thank you for all the love and appreciation and support that you guys are pouring in. I can see the comments, uh, personal DMs and personal emails. With your love, I will be able to forge ahead with the Tenzin Show. Now, did I ever anticipate this love? No, I did not. Only one thing that I had in my cerebellum is that I wanted to serve you with my content. Um, and if I did that, I would consider the Tenzin Show a success. Now, before welcoming our next guest, there's something I want to share very interesting about quantum physics. Um, I read this article somewhere a long time back, according to which uh, there was a research conducted by quantum physicists where it stated that every person, every object, Every environment, any place that you live in has a certain energy. Yes, you heard it right. Right now, even when you are watching me live, I am radiating some sort of energy. Um, and the, the guests that we're going to have on the Tencent Show, our esteemed guest, a very own beloved guest, Jalpa H. Vitilani, will be joining with us in a moment. And she is a person who can just walk in the room, fill the room with joie de vivre, to put it the right way, the French way, fill the room with zest for life. Zouche, right? So I'm extremely, incredibly uh, excited and enthralled to welcome our honorable guest on the Tenzin Show. I can already see Jilpa's request coming in. I'm going to accept it and we are ready to go. Okay, so. Hello, Jilpa. Hi, Tenzin. How are you? Very well. A very good evening. And thank you so much for being on the Tenzin Show. Thank you. Thank you for the warm introduction. It's my privilege to be with you. Yes, absolutely. Because I think um, what I was just mentioning about you is that you are that person who can fill the room with a lot of zoosh and exuberance. Yes. Uh, and I believe so. Uh, because I, I personally believe that all of us have certain energy, right? Uh, and uh, each one of us, we are so unique with our energies. Uh, what I am today is my energy. And that is pretty, uh, you know, it's difficult to assimilate and understand, but it is actually a truth in our lives. Now, I'm extremely delighted to have you on the Tenzin Show. How are you keeping, Jilpa? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. And you're right. I believe, you know, we all carry our own frequencies and energy. And that's how we, you know, attract our experiences and people around us. And I've been watching your show. It's, it's beautiful. You know, you've been, uh, I love the whole, uh, you know, concept of, you know, spreading the message of positivity. And you've been, you know, pro uh, interviewing people from various different profiles. So it's, it's lovely. Sure. And it's an honor to be here. Absolutely. It's an honor to have you, Jilpa. So um, now you've had elephant time success in your own niche in the industry that you're in. Uh, I mean, you are the director of Cosmic Art Gallery. You are the founder of Global Ag uh, Agritech. You're an artist, you're an entrepreneur, you're a social worker. How do you manage all of this? And how has your journey been like through these years? Uh, you know, Tenzin, honestly, my journey has been quite a spontaneous one. The universe has always put me in a space and then, you know, taught me a lot of things, I would say. Like, for instance, I had a love for art since childhood. You know, I've been an artist. And I always thought that, you know, I'm going to be studying, uh, you know, going to do commercial arts. But I somehow gravitated to financial services and management in Bajaj. And, uh, you know, eventually joined my father's business, you know, which was aviation and logistics. And I think that's also part of, you know, our DNA sometimes. A lot of the things which are running, you know, even the gifts through our parents. And of course, it took me some time to recognize this, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, we had this whole stint where we were representing the Finnish tourist board. And I work closely with my sister, Coral, who heads a travel arm and my dad. And, you know, fortunately, we've always traveled extensively. So even when we were doing the promotion of a country, you know, it came naturally to us, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. And uh, uh, I also started my journey as a farmer initially in 98. And uh, yes, so I'm a, I'm a, you know, Kisan. I remember vividly, even this, it's beautiful how the universe has actually taught me because I haven't studied agriculture. You know, people ask me if I have a degree or a master's in agriculture, but uh, I've learned uh, from the people in the field and, you know, with green, visits to greenhouses, not only in different parts of the world, but every corner of India. So, you know, coming back to the story, 
in 97, my dad was having a meeting with somebody who's a floriculture expert. And he said, you know, Jalpa, why don't you join me? And uh, my father has a farmer's license. So he was very keen. He said, you know, we are doing everything else, but it will be very fulfilling to work with the soil. You know, we should do something Absolutely. with agriculture or floriculture. So I was, in, uh, you know, I, I got myself involved in that uh, conversation. You know, it was almost like, you know, over a cup of tea. And the next thing I knew, we were, uh, you know, we went on a recce visit to Israel, which is very, very strong in terms of technology with agriculture. And then we visited Holland, which is like the Mecca, you know, the largest re-export center for roses. And within a yeah. year, we had, uh, you know, this floriculture uh, unit going. And we were one of the first ones to bring greenhouse technology to India at that time. So, you wow. know, uh, so I'm just like all along, honestly, like I said, my journey has been spontaneous. And years later, you know, the artist and, you know, the gift uh, of the gallery, it's been, it's been magnificent. It's truly a gift of the universe. So I truly believe, you know, Tenzin, that whatever has to come your way, it is going to come your way in, in, in any form, you know, at the right time. Because I, I had no ambition of opening an art gallery. And it, it's been an incredible journey. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about it later. And then, you know, even uh, uh, I'm the president of BPW South Mumbai. I was, uh, uh, you know, this is the largest organization in the world which empowers women. They're present in 100 different countries. They're supported by UN Women, UN Global Impact, ITC, among others. So anyway, I was at a state, uh, you know, at a women's international conference in Madhya Pradesh, in Jabalpur. It was called Sweep. And there I met these okay. two incredible ladies, Dr. Amani and Omnia. You know, we just hit it off beautifully. I was a speaker at the conference. They were also speakers. And uh, in fact, I think one of them was the chief guest. So we flew back to Mumbai together. And the first thing that they did is come to the gallery with me. They said, listen, from the airport, we're coming to the gallery. And they've been following the journey of the gallery. And they said, what you're doing is completely in line with what BPW is doing, you know, at an international level. So we would love for you to, you know, come on board. And I got appointed as the president of BPW South Mumbai. And, you know, it was exciting because I got to uh, represent India at the United Nations CSW 62 Summit, uh, you know, on the Commission of Status of Women. It was incredible to meet such inspiring women who are doing incredible work, you know. And later, I also uh, was invited uh, to speak about art and reconnective healing at the BPW, uh, you know, International Congress in Cairo. So once again, I got, you know, the opportunity to represent India there. So, you know, how it's just... The entire journey has been uh, very spontaneous. And, you know, what is exciting is they also have appointed me on the task force for arts, for peace and intercultural understanding. OK, so it's the aim is to okay. form a worldwide committee and also give a platform to talent. Now, this is exactly the vision of the gallery. So it's just okay. like a natural hand in hand. Yes, natural extension. And so right from being a farmer, you know, to reconnective healing, my journey with travel, aviation, and, uh, you know, art and curation is essentially a part of who I am. You know, it's been an integral part of my evolution. So, you know, in a way, it's all interrelated. It's all interconnected. And the common thread has been the creativity and uniqueness that I've brought in. Obviously, each of us is unique. So whatever we do, I think we bring in our own uniqueness, right? So that's not just for me. I think everybody does that. And as I said earlier, you know, I'm a, I'm a people's person. So whether you'll put me in the city yeah. or you put me in a village or at the farm, you know, I like to uh, interact with people and I naturally tend to engage them in whatever else I'm doing. You know, this is, a, again, an extension of who I am. So I also believe that there's, you know, a freshness and spontaneity when life evolves, you know, and then you grow and you learn from these cycles in life. At least that's how it's been for me. I think it was, it was, uh, it was an amazing statement, what you mentioned, because a lot of us often are so behooved by circumstances and especially behooved when you have a lot of challenges and too many tasks for you to handle and too many things when you have on a plate, but to be able to manage that and to manage it this good, I applaud you on that one, Jelpa. You really? know, if the, your universe has put you in a space, right? It's opened up a pathway. It obviously has a plan. And I trust that. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Indeed, indeed. Now, um, I'm very, very extremely curious to know, when was the first time you realized, okay, I can actually feel more than other people? Because to be a reconnective energy, uh, you know, healer, a practitioner, you should be able to feel it first, right? 
So when did you first realize, because uh, to be very honest, to be very, very honest, Jalpa, I am an HSP and I just I spoke to you about it a few days ago, right? Yeah. Uh, that I enter a room and I know the energy of the space. I see a picture of a person on phone and I can tell uh, how the person is. It's just my intuition. So when did you first ever realize that this is something that I could do? You know, uh, that's a gift uh, on your part. You know, I've seen that even with the with the people that you brought onto the show, they're all holding a high frequency. So I, I've, I've already seen that in you, which is beautiful. And, uh, you know, for me, honestly, I've, uh, if you're talking about the reconnective healing, I've never practiced any form of healing. Okay. My sister, okay. Dora, she spoke to me about uh, Dr. Pearl and reconnective healing. And I went to listen to him and, uh, you know, he gave this amazing talk in Mumbai. It was just a one hour talk and a sharing. And I said, whatever it is that Dr. Pearl does, I have to do. And he has this, you know, international bestseller, the, you know, the reconnection, heal others and heal yourself. I hadn't read the book, but I landed up for the conference. I mean, for the training six months later. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's been an incredible journey. It completely transformed my life. And my sister and me were among the first few practitioners in India at that time. And when okay. I was in, in, during this, the, you know, the time of the seminar and we were bathing in the frequencies and as we were learning the work, I experienced a space of nothingness. And to me, that nothingness is everything. So, you know, it was a clear indication that this is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing in life. And what happened is that, uh, you know, a lot of pathways opened up for me. This is actually, you know, a gateway to accelerated life progress. So I experienced shifts at many different levels, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, financially, uh, my gallery birth in a dream. After I had my reconnective healing and reconnection done, I was given the name of the gallery, the space, the logo, and complete direction on what I was to do further. So you see, when you receive a gift, which is so magnificent, it's only natural that you want to contribute back and you want to share. You know, I believe that life is a cycle. It's about giving to receive and receiving to give. And that's when I became passionate about sharing this gift and journey and this journey of transformation with so many other people. And even now, we're just a handful of practitioners in India. And, you know, when reconnective healing uh, frequencies entrain your system, your cells are proven by science to emit higher levels of biophotonic light. So it reconnects you to your own full potential. up for them so it's just that it touched me Am I so deeply. to you uh yes can you hear me hold on i'll just Hello? uh check there's some yes. auto yes. am i audible to you Jelpa? hello yeah, can you hear me? Yes, very well indeed. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, very much, very much. Perfect. It was a network glitch somewhere. Okay, okay, now. okay. Perfect. Okay. Please tell me, Jumpa. Yes, so you know, it's basically a, a reconnective healing. Like I said, it's a gateway to accelerated life progress, right? It reorients you to the fullness of who you are. And we have this new bandwidth of frequencies available on the planet for the first time. And, you know, we have access to this. And it's creating greater coherence and order, you know, within ourselves. And what a gift it is when, you know, when your inner and outer worlds rhyme. And uh, like I said, a lot of people if experience that a lot of pathways open up for them. And since it's transformed my life, you know, it's become my truth in a way. And uh, yes, and that's why we are passionate about sharing this gift with many more people. And I think, you know, when you said that, when did you realize? I think it's a, a being sensitive to energy is essentially a part of who I am. It was not like any okay. event or uh, at any age. I think this is just the way, uh, you know, I've been. I think even the family, the home environment has been conducive to this kind of growth. Or, you know, we've, sure. I've always sure. been sensitive, like you said, to people, you know, to energy centers. You know, sometimes it's not just about visiting a shrine or a church, but some of, there are these, some of these energy centers or even out in nature, which completely rejuvenate you. You know, people, you know, people, even when you're around certain people, it will completely uplift you. Yes, yes, I think I agree. 
because uh, what you mentioned is very true that uh, the energy, all of us, we emit a certain radiance. We have a certain aura, right? So uh, that aura really radiates yes. through and impacts our lives, impact the lives of those around us. So you have to really understand, fathom yes. the importance of energy in your lives. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So even with the gallery, the tagline is carrying frequencies home because we're carrying the frequencies of love, harmony, peace, balance, you know, through the art, through any of the work that we're doing, actually. Right. Now, I know that Cosmic Heart Gallery is a quintessential platform for all artists, right? You also have yes, some amazing yes. events. And the most beautiful thing about uh, the Cosmic Heart Gallery is because the art pieces are really carefully, you know, sort of tailor-made. That's personally what I feel, so positive. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, the colors, in terms of the texture, in terms of the whole pictorial representation. So could you please enlighten our dear audiences about a little more about the Cosmic Heart Gallery? You know, we, we are actually a gallery, like I would say a mid-sized gallery nestled in the busy district of South Mumbai. And we're offering, yes. if I may say, an exquisite collection of art, you know, and we've hosted about 130 successful events in a short span of seven years related to art, culture and music. So the gallery is actually a platform for talent ends in every piece of art, you know, I'm personally, uh, you know, selecting something which, you know, actually speaks to me. That's what we bring into the gallery. And the idea is to give young artists and veterans in art a platform, you know, and uh, we also conduct workshops. So in that sense, it's a very experiential and interactive space. So it's also our passion and vision to touch the innate sense of creativity of every person whose paths we cross, bringing beautiful gifts from the world of art, sound and reconnected healing. And every exhibition is curated with a strong underlying message. Since the gallery is on the evolutionary path to touch people's lives yeah. by the medium of art. And, you know, our underlying vision is to create a world without borders, you know, which is based and focused on the exchange of art and culture. And in that journey, we've actually also partnered with several organizations, you know, when we're doing this kind of work, because I do believe that the exchange of art and culture is the foundation of peaceful coexistence. So, Everyone, yes. you know, should have a beautiful home. And when you have a beautiful painting in your home, it's constantly engaging you, it's interacting with you, it's holding space, you know, not only aesthetically, but it's also adding a different dimension and it's working on you energetically, right? So our journey is to bring in these frequencies, you know, beautiful frequencies with art into people's homes and also to bring in affordable art ends in. Because I think that yes. art is for everyone. It's not just, you know, yes. for a few people. And uh, also, uh, you know, in, in, in that sense, it's so important. And I feel that, you know, uh, as a gallery owner and a curator, I love versatility in art. So every exhibition is also quite unique. And the same plays out for me, you know, personally, even in life actually. And uh, the important thing is to keep doing different things. You know, I'm not only dealing in one genre of art, it's important to keep innovating and moving ahead in order to succeed. And most importantly, also inspire and encourage the creativity, creativity of others whose journey we touch along the path. This, I think, is what makes it more interesting. So, you know, as a gallery, we're always set to deliver an amalgam of experiences under a diverse range of exhibition concepts and highlighting the work of established veterans and also young emerging artists, you know, who are uh, doing well in their craft. So each journey, uh, each show is really on a, you know, it takes you on a journey where the inner and outer worlds rhyme. I, I think you understand what I'm saying here. Certainly. Yes. Certainly, I do. And, uh, yes. uh, you know, it's also exciting the work that I'm doing with BPW International. Like I said, I'm on this international committee for arts, for peace and intercultural understanding, where even now in the lockdown, we are planning a worldwide virtual exhibition, which is going to be all over, uh, you know, in so many 800 different countries. And uh, I would also, you know, maybe just mention one or two things like we've been one of, we're a fairly young gallery, but we were one of the 16 international galleries who were invited to show their work at Art Bahrain Across Borders. And this exhibition wow. was held under the patronage of Her Majesty Princess Sabika and who's, uh, you know, also the president of the Supreme Council of Women. And, uh, you know, we were very proud to show uh, the work of two immensely talented Indian artists over there, Natasha Lala and Shailan Parker. And uh, their work was widely appreciated. And, you know, Natasha's work is also lined with some of the royal families, in fact, now in Bahrain. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of great pride for all of us. 
uh yes uh, you know the journey of the gallery has just really been a gift as i as i have told you earlier in every way undeniably i i couldn't agree more because uh i think also about art that something that i really find interesting is for a lot of people it's also escapism uh words that you are not able to express yourself you actually put it out in the form of art so art yes. is a very beautiful modality of actually expressing your individuality your mental yeah. state right um That's true. and um what you mentioned about the cosmic art gallery i think everyone here uh if you're accessible right now of course the situation is such that you don't really step out of your homes but um in other ways but besides you it, should it. definitely visit the cosmic art gallery because as jelpa mentioned uh, uh they focus not only on one certain uh type of painting one certain genre of art but celebrate all kinds of art and more importantly uh, they use art as a bridging gap between different cultures to bring about peace and coexistence i don't think there could be anything more beautiful and i think it's a very very uh, beautiful message uh through art yes we're going to start our virtual exhibitions next month okay yes okay so so uh, i think uh, how can the participants uh they they take uh participants can really attend that through your website or uh, yes 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 so platform? you know uh, through our website through our social media they can join us even on facebook you know so it will be and we'll of course be sending out to our you know our, our, our patrons email invites so they will enjoy the shows virtually now because we must keep having conversations on art especially sure. at these times i think right okay now a very very pertinent question because uh, a lot of budding artists i think would love to hear from you your master advice for the budding aspirants artists uh whether it's uh reconnective uh healers practitioners what is your take on how they can grow in this industry that you're already successful in yeah you know the first thing is if you have a, you know some interest in reconnective healing you know maybe even listening to this maybe you read about it somewhere heard about it even now there are very few people in india tenzin who know about it but if you feel intrigued i would say i would invite you to experience a session you know that would be the first step and the minute you experience a session if you feel a connection you know i would really invite you to use this time especially in the lockdown to learn it because you can do access online courses you know the founder of this work dr eric pearl and the director dr julian uh, uh, fleur she's all they're doing beautiful courses you can learn level 1 online there's also something called living in the frequencies so you know you don't need to really wait and this would probably be a great journey uh, for you and you know a transformative one i can assure you and even for the people around you and you know you could even make a career out of this and which would be a very emotionally fulfilling one because yes. like we are running you know my sister and me we are running our businesses but we are passionate about doing the reconnected healings and you know we both i'm doing at the gallery she's doing it at the center so you could you know you could really find time and do this at your niche and really be doing something which is very rewarding in many ways and um, you know as far as artists are concerned i would say you know it's so important that you find your own unique form of expression you know where you weave in your philosophy of life you know tens and even you've expressed that very beautifully in the earlier you know introductions so start small you know maybe with exhibitions for families and friends and you can also use digital media to put your art out there do connect with galleries you're free to write to us as well you know we are a platform for talent write to institutions so who can take your work and connect it to the right people you know and for any of you who you know for the curators i would like to share my philosophy that develop a story and deliver an experience that is memorable art needs to move people and then only it can become part of your home so every event every painting and every creation should really merge from a singular message you know and philosophy that you want to highlight you know in your yeah. own way and you know for entrepreneurs i would say that you know everything starts with an idea tenzin right and you need passion and hard work to make that bloom so today you see so many little businesses blooming up especially even with the lockdown even home based companies so any entrepreneur should completely back themselves 100% and seek help where needed never be embarrassed to ask for help i'm never embarrassed if i don't know something i will make sure i go out and you know uh, fill myself in with experts as well and start small but you know you can build a solid foundation which can continuously grow and steadily grow so the important thing is in anything that you do follow your passion because then you become associated with the work you're doing it's no longer about doing it but it's about becoming it 
it's part of your dna right and then you must trust yourself you must believe in yourself you know and work uh, you know within a set of values and principles which you believe in that is i think extremely important and also you know you must go out uh, be uh, and uh, you know take chances you know go out and prove your metal have fun because you know if you're going to take if you're going to restrict yourself and not take risks you'll never be able to reach your full potential so have fun with it and you know once you've transcended the basic learnings bring in your own uniqueness and creativity to whatever it is that you're doing because that's what makes you different and that's what makes the difference and now we delve us certainly 100% true i think um if you just practice dear audience dear viewers what Jalpa just mentioned, you can notice and witness substantial difference in your own life, whether uh, it is that you are an entrepreneur, whether it is that you want to do what Jalpa has done, a reconnective uh, healer, a reconnective healing practitioner, right? Yes. So um, for everybody out there who's seeking some sort of guidance and inspiration, most importantly, if you're starting small, don't be ashamed to do so because everybody starts from ground zero. Nobody is right. skyrocketing. You have to get yourself into the trenches first before actually exploring the whole self, right? That's so, right. So, um, yes, Jalpa. Now, what are your principles of success? Because I know you've galvanized your own route to success, yes? And uh, you're already spreading in a lot of energy. I Look at me. I'm already so energetic just by talking to you, Jalpa. <laughs> so, what are your principles of success? And what is success in your perspective? You know, uh, Tenzin, uh, uh, I always feel my way through things. And this is something since childhood, you know, I've always followed my heart and this has somehow worked for me. Of course, you know, there will be certain decisions which might go wrong, but eventually it's something which has worked for me. And I do know, believe and I know that the universe is talking to each of us in different ways, right? So the more we silence ourselves, and when I say silence, the more quieter we are within, we can pick up the signs and I pick up the signs very quickly, if I may say so, you know, like that gallery, okay. it was just shown to me in the dream, but I knew I have to do the work, you know, even with the reconnective healing, whether it's even with the farming, it's a sense of knowing for me each time. And I've, my father has taught me that always follow your passion, everything else will follow. This has been my mantra and it's worked for me joyously, not even beautifully, I would say it's brought me a lot of joy all along the way. So I simply follow my passion and I think we must do things unconditionally in life in the sense that, you know, once you put in your best, you have to trust and let, then let go. And I have an immense sense of faith and surrender. So even if things go right or wrong, it's for a larger reason, which you may not be able to see at that time. And I yes. think I'm fairly good at multitasking. You know, I think everybody has some strength. So I'm fairly good at asking because I'm okay. And and I believe in being my oh, authentic self. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. Please continue. Yes. Talking. Yes. So I said that I think I'm fairly good at multitasking, if I may say so. And I believe in being my authentic self, Tenzin. It's so important because life is about being happy and well. Okay. Eventually, everything is about nothing. And that nothing is everything. There's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to go. That's, that's been my philosophy. Because life takes care of life, okay? And it keeps presenting itself to you in different ways. This is what I believe. And this has really been my simple formula to success. That is responding to life as life evolves, actually. And for even when what we perceive is a tough situation, right? Is sometimes it's presenting itself for a learning so that we hone ourselves to the next level. So I'm continuously trying to work on myself, transcending what we may even call difficult times, because these are also gifts in disguise. So it's about conscious evolution, and we can bring that into our work, into our life, in personally, or in every different way. And I truly believe, you know, uh, that we are here for a larger purpose. We need to discover our own purpose. And I try to detach from the good and the bad, because we are all going to experience different things, right, as we journey through life and through our work. But I keep attempt attempting to come back to my own center and connecting to that which is timeless, which is my own being, okay? And I love following Muji's pointings. I may sound a little philosophical here, but what I've realized is when we rest in our own beingness, everything is really perfect and life starts organically taking care of itself and we start flowing like a river. 
so you know the process becomes effortless it starts with silence within but you know we get guided along the way and we start flowing like i said like a river and for me personally tenzin you know my wealth is and i do believe wealth is precious moments memories we create you know uh, grace uh, blessings and the relationships that we accumulate in life okay this to me is everything and we are only doing ourselves a favor if we get the opportunity to give back to life or to society so you know really we are doing that it's it's a it's a gift to get that opportunity and we are only doing ourselves a favor i also believe that family is beyond biological family okay we are all yes. interconnected beautifully <laughs> right and there are no coincidences even this interview you know it's not a coincidence it's a not gift a you know right and uh, yeah. uh, i believe to you know i like i like to be in the moment i like to enjoy the little things in life i think that's very important and i'm a person in gratitude i would say because i think there is always something to be thankful for yes i think once we start practicing gratitude our life is going to flip around flip around the world is going to shift right the paradigm shift is what we're talking about here right fantastic that's right Now, that's right yeah now i'm very um keen to know i i think i'm going to pay real heed when you speak about this you're also someone who believes that women need to stand up for women right um and through your noble initiatives you're trying your level best to do that whether it is the workshops that we just spoke about um previously on the telephone uh, regarding you teaching them how to make their own sanitary pads or whether it's through giving employment in your own uh, global agritech where it is did you ever know of course delpha already mentioned it is one of the pioneer in rose cultivation not just that also have some amazing organic vegetables so i really want to know more about the whole um you know support that you render to a female population through your noble initiatives you know it's it's happened quite uh, again uh, i think yes uh, women should support women i think men should also support women we should also support men yes. so this is beyond us as genders right tens and the thing is that we all have the yin and yang in within us but yes you know with the farm it's been beautiful because what happens is that women are very good at the delicate handling of flowers so we provided quality employment to rural youth particularly women so i just had about 10 men and about 75 women coming from the neighboring villages and uh, you know of course uh, you know uh, for the gallery we have a lot of different artists you know uh, from both uh, men and women and it's been a great incredible journey i would like to mention in my logistics business it's 95% men right but anyway okay. now the thing is uh, it's been an incredible journey even with uh, this i think you you seen the uh, post for the clock pad yes. making workshop we did recently so i'm the state director of an ngo called humans for humanity which was founded by anurag chohan at the young age of 16 and one of the projects which we are very passionate about is wash women's sanitation and hygiene so you know yes. it's been an incredible journey taking this work all over and uh, uh, you know we we had this uh, workshop with two other ngos recently you know it's the time in the world for everybody to come together because even different people when you're working towards the same purpose if you come together there's more strength and so with rehab india and tarni trust we did a beautiful uh, workshop for community uh, you know community groups in bihar can you imagine that in the slums they got either got a small laptop or a phone and they sat in groups at between 6 and 7 in the evening which is the peak time that these women cook and uh, you know we had uh, this uh, a, a young um, girl artika who's uh, you know running charni trust who actually you know demonstrated how to make the pads and uh, also i'd like to mention that human for humanity is we are doing you know this kind of work even in the lockdown it's providing a livelihood to women who make the pads they're making it for themselves and they're also able to earn some money out of it when they sell the pads as well so you know uh, the what yes and wash is about breaking the taboos you know i always tell the older women are you going to serve me tea if i come to your house you know during my periods you know it's about oh teaching God. them yes it's about teaching them that you know women are living goddesses and this is a natural yeah. part of your beauty and your process you know and uh, yes so it's it's been an incredibly fulfilling journey for us you know it makes you aware of your privileges and how you can share you know yes. sometimes it's such simple sharings but it is so much fun you know even uh, visiting the rural and the uh, you know uh, urban slums and villages and now the session online was you know like an eye opener even for us 
It was beautiful. A new avenue to reach out to more women, yes. right? Yes, yes. So you see the universe conspires to make this happen. When we have that seed and, you know, we're truly passionate about something, pathways will always open up. True, very true. Uh, and I think what you mentioned about uh, how taboo uh, it is, the topic of, uh, you know, sanitation, especially when we talk about periods, women are so embarrassed to talk about it in our society. Yes. And it's qu quite unfortunate. It could be different factors, like could be their culture, uh, they could be education, it could be the society that they live in, uh, because we know that majority of it is patriarchal. We cannot deny that fact. Um, exactly. And women have, women always have that. I think if we ourselves are not open about it, how can we help other women, right? Exactly. So please make sure that you understand, as Jalpa mentioned, in Hindu culture or in, in, our, in, in the Indian culture, women are treated as goddesses, right? And yes. goddesses, yes. every part of her must be celebrated, right? Um, and this, this sort of femininity must be celebrated. So thank you so much, Jalpa. You were exactly. an inspiration to speak with, a treat to speak with. Um, and I hope that uh, today, true. men, women, children, young aspirants, entrepreneurs, everybody, they seek some really good inspiration from you. Take uh, from your wonderful insights that you've bestowed upon us on the Tenzin Show. Thank you so much, Alpha. Thank you, Tenzin. And I'd like to mention one more common thread between us, you know, His Holiness, okay. the Hotel Dalai Lama, he's always blessed the journey of the gallery. And we've done some okay. beautiful uh, medical camps with his blessings, you know, with, for Tibetan medicine. And I know that you've been his translator and you've done some incredible yes. work with him as well. So, you know, that's another common thread. Yes, for I've us. been his translation compere, which is a slightly little different role than translator. So a translation compere okay. is somebody who hosts the show in a different language. So I've done that for okay. uh, in the presence of His Holiness where he was there. I did it actually in Canada. Uh, because they speak what? multiple languages. So oh, I was what? a translation compeer, yes. And uh, I think uh, I also did it in the presence of uh, former Chief Minister of Karnataka, H.P. Kumaraswamy. So it was it was a really good experience for me, indeed. Yes, yeah, so, you know, I read that. So I said, I must ask you on your own show about this. <laughs> yes, definitely. Why yeah. not? Yes. So, you know, I, the most beautiful time I've had uh, is when we were, I was invited for a uh, youth conference, you know, by the United States Institute of Peace. And we were 50 youth with His Holiness at his palace in Dharamshala. And he okay. gave a private audience to my parents at that time. He even invited them to the conference. So I was the only delegate with the parents at the conference. And he okay. gifted and presented dad a Buddha from his own altar. And he said, this wow. is for your home and this is for your family. So I think those, for gorgeous. me, you know, these are uh, blessings and this is the grace and these are the, you know, the paths which the gallery has opened up. Yes. Yes, undeniably, Ajilpa. I agree. And I hope uh, that you, uh, that we all get to see him once again because uh, I've seen him multiple times, but I would want to see him again. Who doesn't want to, uh, you know, meet and greet his holiness, right? So um, with That's that, right. thank you very much, Jalpa, and uh, be ever thank smiling you. and gracious as you are, and radiate that uh, light and uh, exuberance that you already are radiating. Thank you so much, thank, Jalpa. Thank, thank you, you so Tenzin. Much. I'll say it in Tibetan, Tashi Delik. Thank you. Oh, just a little bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.